Yo, yo, what is going on, sports world? This is your boy, Keaton McNair, and welcome to my channel called Keaton Talk Sports. And today, I'm going to get into my 2023 NFL predictions for this upcoming season. Um, how I'm going to start off this video is I'm going to talk about each division. I'm going to predict where I think each team is going to finish within the division and give my informative take on why I have those teams um, where they are. So, first off, I'm going to start with the AFC East. Obviously, I think that's the best division in football, in my opinion, uh, between that and the AFC North. But the AFC East here, um, I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. So, last place, I have the Dolphins finishing in last with a record of 8-9. Uh, the reason why I have the Dolphins finishing last is because the one thing is to his health. If two is healthy all year this season, I think they are a 12-win team. I think they can win the division. It's not that I don't think the Dolphins have talent. I think they have talent across the board. And they have Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle. Uh, they just added Jalen Ramsey this offseason for the defense. It's just going to be a matter of can Tua stay on the field? Because if he's not on the field, I don't think the Dolphins are any threat within the AFC. I think they have, you know, Tua's got to be able to stay on the field in order for the Dolphins to compete in this conference, in this division, because this division is just too good. I think, you know, it's a defensive division. You know, Tua is going to need to be healthy and be on his A game, you know, if the Dolphins will have any chance in this division. But overall, you know, if you look at last year with this team, you know, they started off hot. And then once December came, they just started losing games left and right. And obviously Tua with the concussion issues that he's been dealing with, um, you know, last year, you know, him suffering a concussion against Buffalo. And then on a short week, four days after that, goes on the field against Cincinnati and gets another concussion. So that's the one thing I'm really worried about with the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins have talent. I think if two is healthy, I think they're a 12-win team easily, no doubt. But until I see it, I'm going to have the Dolphins finishing around 8-9, and nine, um, finishing last in the AFC East. Next, I have the Jets finishing at 9-8. and eight. Um, now people, um, you know, the, the addition of Aaron Rodgers obviously is a huge upgrade over Zach Wilson, no doubt about that. Um, but the Jets, I think they've been getting the most hype this off season, which I can understand why they were, because they're obviously, they're going to be on hard knocks this season. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers obviously being there, they got the weapons that they have. Uh, Wilson and on that, they obviously have the defense um, that's supposed to be one of the best in the league. Um, but I just think the Jets have been getting too much hype. I just think it's going to come down to obviously coaching and can this Jets team live up to the hype? Because, you know, being in that New York media ain't no joke. You know, if the Jets get off to a slow start, you know, they're going to be taking a lot of heat early in the year. And I don't think that's something they can afford. Um, that they can afford to do. I think they have to get off to a good start. Um, they have to live up to expectations. It's New York. Their fans don't give a crap about no rebuild. They don't want to hear anything about, oh, well, they have the talent. They should be able to win games. But I think, you know, a lot of people think they're going to win 12-plus uh, games or even get to the Super Bowl. I don't, I'm not that high on the Jets, honestly. I think they have a good team. They have a solid defense. Um, questionable coaching now. I'm Robert Sala is going to come down to whether if he can um, get more creative offensively um, for Aaron Rodgers. You know, can Aaron Rodgers does he have enough left in the tank to carry this Jets team to the Super Bowl? Um, that's going to be the question going forward. But uh, no, that's just my opinion with that. Um, you know, some of y'all might be surprised with this, but um, I got the Patriots finishing second in the AFC East with a record of 10 and seven. Now here's the reason why I have the Patriots finishing second. People forget what happened last year with Mac Jones and his offense. You have a, a defensive minded coach in Mac Patricia who was calling offensive plays. Look how that played out last year. We went eight and nine last year, almost Made the playoffs without an offensive court, a real offensive coordinator, right? Patriots have the defense. Probably going to be the best defense this year, in my opinion. You, we have Bill O'Brien now, which that was our main problem. 
after last season is we need an offensive coordinator, and we went out and got that. We solved that issue for the Patriots. Mac Jones now has a real offensive coordinator. I think he's going to have a tremendous year this season. Okay, he's going to have a tremendous year this season. And I think a lot of people are sleeping on this team. Now, the Patriots obviously haven't gotten any love or any, you know, talk this offseason. It's been pretty quiet. No one's expecting us to do anything this season, which um, as a fan, I'm fine with that because I think that I know what the Patriots are capable of doing. I know what the defense is, is capable of doing. Bill Belichick is one of the best, if not the best, in terms of game planning each and every week for his opponent. The Patriots are going to be just like what they were last year. They're going to be more competitive. They're going to be competitive. They're going to be in the mix for a playoff spot. But I think they're going to be better than they were last year now that we have Bill O'Brien as our offensive coordinator now. It's not going to be like last year where Mac is frustrated. Mac is going to be more relaxed. He's going to be more fluid. I think he's going to flourish under Bill O'Brien. And I think the Patriots' offense will be much better. I think, you know... We may not have the receiving core like the Dolphins have with Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, or, you know, with the you know, Buffalo with Stephon Diggs and all those guys. But Kendrick Bourne is no is no scrub. We have Lamar J. Stevenson at the running game. We have um who else do we got? Lamar J. Stevenson, Kendrick Bourne, we got Mike Gazicki, we just added this offseason, tight end from Miami. We just add, we still have Hunter Henry. You know, we have a good tight end duo. We have a good running back duo. And we just added Christian Gonzalez this offseason. Um, or in the draft um, from Oregon, who has size, which is what we needed because if you look at the AFC East, they got some fast receivers in this division. Now we added him uh, for the cornerback who has size, who's able to stay with some of these top receivers in the league. So the Patriots, I think people need to stop sleeping on them and realize that the Patriots are going to be in every game this season. They're not going to be, I mean, no team is going to blow out New England. You know, the only, the only, you know, Patriots are going to be in every single game this season. Okay. That's just the way it's going to be. It's going to, I'm not saying the Patriots are going to win every game, but they're going to be in most of the games because of their defense. And I, I think people need to understand that, you know, that, you know, Mac Jones you know, some people think that he's not the guy. I think he is the guy now that he has a real coordinator. I think he's going to get back to where he was his rookie year when um, Josh McDaniels was here as our coordinator before he left from uh, before he left to the Raiders the very next season. That was where that literally that was literally what we were missing last year was a real offensive coordinator. You know, Bill Belichick tried it out and it didn't it didn't work. Just uh, and it's just plain and simple. So, you know, the Patriots, I think they're going to be very good this year. I think they're going to be uh, one of the dark horse. I'm not saying the dark horse to win the Super Bowl, obviously. We have a long way to go before we even talk about Super Bowl. But they're definitely a playoff team, for sure, I, in my opinion. That's just how, you know, obviously, you see you have a Patriot jersey on. I'm not biased or anything like that, but I'm just being real. I think our defense, I think we have the best defense in this division. I don't think it's, I don't think it's you know, really an argument there. Um, moving on, I have the Buffalo Bills finishing first with a record of 12-5. and five. Now, this Bills team's interesting because a lot of people think that the Bills are going to fall off after all the drama with Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen this offseason and all this stuff like that, losing their coordinator after stepping down. I think his name is Leslie Frazier, I think. Um, but this, but this Bills team is still... Until someone actually beats the Bills or de dethrones the Bills in this division, I'm still going to have them finishing first, okay? You know, the Josh Allen's still there. He's good. The only thing about him is can he keep his turnovers down this season? That's going to be their main question because he's as good as, he, as good as Josh Allen is. He, at times, tries to do too much with the ball, tries to force it. When there's no need to throw it, instead of just throwing the ball away and making a simple play. He tries to force it, and then he puts his team in jeopardy, you know? Can he keep down the turnovers this season? Can the Buffalo Bills 
get out of their own way. Ever since they lost that AFC Championship game to the, to the Chiefs after being up with 13 seconds, literally 13 seconds, can they get past the Bengals? Can they get past the Chiefs? That's going to be the question with them. That's the only thing that's literally standing in their way is the Chiefs and the Bengals. Can they beat those teams? Because you're obviously you're gonna have to beat those teams to get through to if you're trying to get to the Super Bowl. That's just the way it is. And in my opinion, the the Bills they have to win within I believe within the next few years or so because their window of they don't have that type of window of opportunity to win the Super Bowl. You know, Josh Allen, his contract is coming up. He's gonna be looking to get paid a ton of money. So if you give him all that money, where's the rest of that money going to go to try to build the roster around Josh Allen? That's going to be the question. So the the Bills have to, and you gave Von Miller all that money all last offseason. Von Miller came here for a reason. That's to win a Super Bowl. He didn't come here to, to, to be a part of oh, making a wild card and losing. He's trying to win a Super Bowl. So if you don't take advantage of that opportunity, I don't know where the Bills go from here. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you know, I think the Bills, in my opinion, I think they're still the best team in the division. But, I mean, they're not going to really do anything in the playoffs, you know, unless someone gets injured or something like that. I don't see – just I just don't see this Bills team getting through the AFC. I just think the Chiefs and Bengals are just better than they are right now. I think they're, they're the third, fourth best team in the AFC. Um, and that's just how I feel. I just think, you know, the Bills are just there. They're a playoff team, but they're not going to do anything, you know, unless they, you know, they run up against Cincinnati or, or, or Kansas City, they're just going to lose again. That's just the way I see it. I mean, it's been pretty consistent ever since they play each other. So they always lose to those teams every time the Bills run, uh, run up against them. So that's about it. So Bills haven't finished in 12 and 5. All right, moving on to the AFC North. I have the Browns finishing last in the AFC North with a record of 8 and 9. Now, this Browns team is, if you look at their talent, they're solid all around the board. I think they have, you know, Chubb, who's a solid running back. Uh, Deshaun Watson, obviously, getting there late in the season after being suspended most of last year. Now that he has a full off season, he gets, you know, he has more, um, more from, uh, he's more familiar with the playbook. You know what I'm saying? So the Browns have a solid defense, I think. It's just going to be a matter of can Deshaun Watson, can he take that next step in terms of trying to get the Browns to the playoffs? Because it's been a minute since the Browns made the playoffs. I mean, they've made it, what, during the COVID year when they beat Pittsburgh or whatever. Um, but can Deshaun Watson is going to be the key. Is Can he be that quarterback that he was in Houston? That has yet to be seen. We haven't, we haven't seen it yet. But my point is, the Browns are just in the they're just in the a tough division. That's the thing. I just think the Browns, you know, I have them where they are just because it's a tough conference, and I just think that the I don't think they're any you know I wouldn't necessarily say they're any they're not a threat, but I think I just don't think they're going to be able to or they don't have enough. I don't think to make the uh, make the AFC playoffs this season. So that's just how I feel about them and. I think it's, you know, it's a safe spot for them. I think they'll win around eight games. They may win more if everything goes right. But until then, I'm just going to keep the Browns where they are at last. Um, next up, I have Pittsburgh finishing third um, at 9-8. and eight. Same story with the Steelers. They have a solid defense. T.J. Watt, obviously, is the backbone of that defense. If he's healthy all year, I think Pittsburgh is a playoff team. And Kenny Pickett, obviously, had a pretty good, I would say, Right around the middle, good rookie year. I think he's only going to get better. Um, Najee Harris, I think he's going to have a better year this year. I think, you know, Pittsburgh's offensive line is a little shaky, yes, I would think. You know, he hasn't been able to run the ball effective as I would hope he would. Um, but, you know, Mike Tomlin, never been under 500 as, a, you know, all the years he's been a head coach, never had a losing season. You know, last year, Pittsburgh looked like they were dead in the water for the first eight weeks, going two and six. And then all of a sudden, they just came out of nowhere and won nine games towards the end of the year. Like, they're just the Steelers. They're, you know, they're going to compete. They're going to try to compete for a playoff spot. They're going to be in the mix. Um, but, 
you know, like I said, it's literally it's, it's that simple. TJ Watt's healthy all year. I think they're a playoff team. I don't think there's any doubts about that. But, um, so yeah, that's about it right there. Other than that, um, moving on, I have the Ravens finishing second with a record of 11 and 6. Um, like I mentioned earlier, before this video started, you know, Lamar got his contract. Um, you know, he got his contract. Now, the old question with the Ravens is, can Lamar Jackson, can he finally get his team to the AFC Championship game or even the Super Bowl? He's never been past the divisional round in his career. Never. Can he be, can it be the first time that he's, yeah, he gets past the divisional round this season? Now, if you look at the Ravens team, I think they have a solid defense. I think their defense is, is legit. You know, I think their offense is pretty good. They have, they just added OBJ this offseason. They had they still have Kevin or uh, Duvernay and all of them on offense. But can Lamar Jackson get his other players involved? Because like there's times there's times where I watch him, he tries to do too much or tries to be like the guy. There's times you gotta just trust your teammates a little bit more and just understand you have enough around you to compete in this conference. The Ravens, no reason why the Ravens should not at least get to the AFC Championship game this season, you know, with the talent that they have. You know, Lamar's been there for a while now. He's going to his, what, sixth year? He's been in the league since 2018. You know, I think it's time for him to, you know, take that next step in his career and get to the AFC Championship game or something, or Super Bowl. And I think you have to try to win within the time that you got the five-year deal Right, two hundred, I believe, sixty million. I think, I think it was. Um, you have to win a Super Bowl in that time frame. If you don't win a Super Bowl, the front office is going to get so much backlash. There's going to get so much backlash. You have to win the Super Bowl within five years. There's just there's no excuse to give all to give. I mean, if you're the front office, there's no excuse to give Lamar all that money, and then you don't do nothing with it. You have to win a Super Bowl. Or else it's a but, or else the the front office is going to get a lot of heat because originally you were thinking about trading Lamar Jackson and try to get as much back as you can, which I think they should have just traded Lamar Jackson, you know, somewhere where he can win a Super Bowl, you know, or somewhere. You should have just trusted your instinct instead of, you know, running your mouth saying, "Oh well." We're, we're, we're not committed to Lamar Jackson. All of a sudden, you give him a five-year deal, and then, and like, okay. So, like, you have to try to go out and win a Super Bowl within that time frame that you gave him that contract. There's no excuse if you're the Ravens front office. You gave him all that money. Okay, you gave him OBJ. Okay, cool, cool. Go out and do something with that. If you don't do something with that, it's a failure. There's no, there's no doubt about that. You failed Lamar Jackson if you're the front office because you should have just trusted yourself and just traded him. Somewhere like Miami. I would love to see him in Miami. That's where he's from. You know what I'm saying? So, but going back to what I was saying earlier, Lamar Jackson has to try to get his, get past the divisional round. That's going to be the really the main focus for the Ravens this year. Can't get to the wild card, losing the first round. I know if you're playing the Bills or whoever, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is you got to do whatever you can to try to get this Ravens a Super Bowl within five years. Or else it's a failure. And it's going to come back. I'm telling you, it will come back on the front office. Because you were originally going to trade Lamar Jackson. You should have, you should have just traded him and get as much back in return as possible. The only problem was is no team wanted to trade. No, or no team think, thought Lamar was deserving of that money. Which you can't really blame the team for saying that. But you're the Ravens. You gave them all that money, okay? You have what you have. You have to go out and just figure it out at the end of the day. And then moving on, uh, first in the AFC North, I have the Cincinnati Bengals finishing with a record of 13-4. and four. Um, Yeah, I mean, same story. They're the classes of the AFC North. They have been for the past couple years. Joe Burrow's legit. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, um, heck of a duo there. Um, defense is probably going to take a little bit of a step back. They lost uh, they lost some pieces on, def on defense. But I think their offense has what it takes to win the Super Bowl. I think Joe Burrow is is hungry to try to get his team to the Super Bowl. You know, and I, I, I think, you know, Cincinnati, you know, I think this is the year that they get through. And they, I think they win the whole thing. Um, 
you just never know. I mean, a lot of, there's a lot of good teams in this conference that can win it, but you know, Cincinnati is very hungry to try to win a Super Bowl. I can tell Joe Burrow is motivated to go out there and 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 just win and prove a lot of people wrong. You know, he has enough around him. You, know, you have the coaching. You have, you know, you have the fan base that's very I you know just as hungry as the as as the Bengals right now to, for a Super Bowl. You know they lose to Chiefs last year. Okay, it, ha it happens. You lost to a good team in Kansas City. Now the one thing I will say with the Bengals is they have to, in my opinion, they have to get home field advantage if they want to get if they want to get if they want to get through the AFC. They have to get home field advantage. You cannot let the Chiefs get home field advantage. I don't care how good. I don't care who's on the Chiefs. If they get any type of home field advantage, they are not going to lose at home. It's just that simple. If you're Cincinnati, you have to get you have to snatch home field away from the Chiefs. That means you play the Chiefs in the regular season and can't say you have to win that game. There's no that's just there's no excuse. You have to win that game. If you want home field advantage, you have to beat those teams. Because that means if you beat them, if it comes down to a tiebreaker, then you win a tiebreaker over them because you beat them in the regular season. You have to beat the Chiefs. If the Bengals want if the Bengals if the Chiefs get home field advantage, they're not losing. It's that simple. It's been like that for the past couple years where the Chiefs have forgotten home field. No one thought the Chiefs would do it because they didn't have the roster or they didn't have the defense. You know, they still have Patrick Mahomes and, and, and Andy Reid over there. It doesn't matter. If they are if they're at home, they're not losing. So if you're the Cincinnati Bengals, you gotta do whatever you can to keep home field away from the Chiefs. That's the only way they're gonna get through the AFC. It's just that simple to me. Which I think they I think they will. I think they will. You know, I think everyone knows that the Chiefs get home field. They're not losing. I think the I think the Bengals know that. So they're going to do whatever they can to try to win. Yeah, I think they can win 13 games or whatever. But they have to beat the Chiefs in, in the regular season. And they have to obviously either finish with the same record with beating the Chiefs or they have to finish with a better record than the Chiefs. That's just what it's that, – those are the two scenarios there. All right, so moving on to the AFC South. Starting at the bottom, I got the Colts finishing two and fifteen, one of the worst teams in the league. Um, Anthony Richardson, they got in the draft. I think has potential. I think he has. Um, I think he has a high ceiling, but it's going to be a rough year. I mean, there's not really much to say about this Colts team. They're going to have a rough, really rough year. They don't have a good offensive line whatsoever. You know, to go back to last year. Um, yeah, I mean, they they have a long way to go. It's gonna be a rough year for the for the Colts. Not much to say about them. Um, the only bright spot about them is their rookie quarterback. But at the same time, he, he's behind a bad offensive line, and I'm afraid he's probably gonna either maybe get hurt or get hit a lot of times. I don't know. We'll see. But the Colts, I don't expect much from this Colts team. They're in a, re a full rebuild, and they're gonna have a long way to go. I expect them to get one of the top picks in the draft this year. Um. Third, I have the Texans finishing with record of six and eleven. Um, yeah, I mean C.J. Stroud, um, that's my boy from Ohio State. You know he's there. I think he, um, my opinion, I think he's in a good situation there. Um, you know, I think the Texans made the right choice getting him in the draft um, instead of Bryce Young. I think C.J. Stroud, you know, six and eleven. Obviously, that's a pretty good year for. You know, being a rookie quarterback, you know, I don't expect them to compete in this division. I expect them to be better than they were last year for sure. Um, but they're they still have a long way to go as well. I think you know, but they will, um, you know, they they'll win around six games, maybe seven games. But I'm going to keep them around six wins for right now, just just because I want to see what C.J. Stroud's like, um, at least for the first couple weeks of the season, see how he. Just moving around the pocket, see what the NFL level is like for him. So, but I have the Texans finishing, um, being better than they were last year, finishing with record six and eleven. Second, I have the Titans finishing with record seven and ten. Um, now DeAndre Hopkins just signed a two-year deal, I think twenty-six million dollars or whatever with the Titans. Um, that move is that that's that's not gonna make them. I mean, listen, DeAndre Hopkins is a good player. At first, I thought he wanted to sign with someone. I thought New England, um, which is my team, by the way, I think I thought New England would would 
uh, be the team that he would choose to go to or somewhere where he can win a Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just confused on why the Titans, like, why would he sign with the Titans for? Just that the, the DeAndre Hopkins does not change anything with Tennessee. They're not going to be any type of threat in the AFC. Ryan Tannehill and Derek Henry, I think this will be the last year of that experiment before they make changes. I think that's going to be done after this year if they if they do bad. But I don't I don't I don't see them really threatening threading the needle in this conference. Mm. There's just the conference is just too good, and I'm not sold with Ryan. I've never been sold with Ryan Tannehill. He's just an, he he's a good he's an average quarterback. Okay, let's just call it what it is. But they're going to be moving on with him soon. They're going probably going to move on from Derrick Henry as well um, with that experiment after this year. We'll see how the season plays out. But, you know, I haven't finished any around 7-10. to 10. I think that's around where I think they will finish maybe eight wins. But either way, they're not going to make the playoffs. I don't think they're that good, in my opinion. Um, moving on, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars finishing first in the AFC South with a record of 12-5. and five. Um, this Jags team is going to be really good. You know, if you look at their schedule, I think they could easily finish with the number one seed because their schedule literally is a cupcake schedule. If you look at their schedule, one of the easiest schedules in the league. You know, uh, Trevor Lawrence is legit. I think he's only going to continue to get better. Um, uh, their de their defense, I think, will be better this year. Um, and their offense, obviously, they're ex very explosive offense. And I think they're only, I mean, they're clearly the best team in this division. Um, and they're going to be, they will be for a long time. You know, the Jags are the team to beat in, the, in this division. Um, you know, I think they are a team that nobody really wants to play with or play against, you know, especially when it comes postseason. I think, you know, they're going to be one of the top teams in the AFC. I mean, they're in an easy division. You know, they're going to be up there with the, you know, up there with the Chiefs and the Bengals and all of them in terms of the top records in the AFC. So, you know, they're going to be a good team, you know. Um, and that's probably not a place you want to go to in, in the playoffs. You know, that humidity down in Jacksonville ain't no joke. So, you know, you, you better not let them get home field advantage or else, you know, it, that will be a, that, I mean, that's going to be a tough place to try to get a win at, especially, you know, in the playoffs where, you know, Normally teams do well at home than they do on the road. I think Jacksonville, if they have home field, that that's gonna be really uh, that's gonna be very interesting to see what other teams in the AFC can go out there and actually beat them. So, but I have them finishing third, or, or not third, yeah, third in the conference, um, with a record of twelve and five. I think they're 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 that good. And not much else to say. If they're gonna be a playoff team. They're gonna be in the mix for, um. Potentially, maybe a Super Bowl, possibly, if, you know, depending. But I don't think that's going to happen. But just they'll definitely be in the mix for a playoffs, for sure. Um, Moving on to the AFC West. Start from the bottom. I got the Raiders finishing 5-12. and 12. Not much to say about the Raiders. Uh, I mean, they have Jimmy Garoppolo, who they just signed this offseason. But uh, I think he's probably going to end up getting surgery, uh, you know, this before the season. So he's – I don't think the Raiders – you know, I wasn't sold with them last year. Uh, Josh McDaniels is a good coordinator, but he did not perform well last year. If you look at him last year, he just did not. He just got outcoached last year in terms of his play calls. They just, I don't know, man. The Raiders, I don't really expect them to compete in this division. I just don't think they're that good. Um, Devontae Adams, I'm very interested in seeing what happens with him after this year. He probably is going to end up playing out this season, but I think he'll end up getting traded, honestly, next year to some, somewhere where he can win. Um, you know, I just don't see him staying with the Raiders beyond this season. I think he'll play one more year with them, and then he's going to end up getting traded. Um, but yeah, man, I don't, you know, I don't like the Raiders. I just don't like their fans. Their fans are just annoying to me. I just don't like their, you know, Raider fans are just, I don't know, something about them just rubs me the wrong way sometimes. You know, they have a good team. Talent-wise, I think they have talent. I just don't think in this division they're going to be able to compete with some of these other teams um, and all that. So, um, Next, I have the Chargers finishing third with a record of 8-9. and nine. Some of y'all Chargers fans out there might be wondering, like, well, why don't you have them winning 10 or more games? Well, the problem with them is I don't trust their coaching. I, I've never – I don't trust their coaching. Their coaching – 
um, you know, they've had some questionable decisions that they made last year. You know, a lot of those games that they lost, they should have won, if you really think about it. Um, it's the same thing. Chargers choke every year. when they Even if they get off to a good start, they always find ways to get in their own way. And, you know, I just don't think, you know, Justin Herbert, obviously, I love Justin Herbert. I think he's a phenomenal quarterback. I just don't like his situation there, in my opinion. I don't like his situation, and it's not his fault, but I don't think the coaches are are putting him in the best positions to succeed and win. There's no reason why. You look at this Chargers team. They have talent all around the board. There's no reason why this team can't at least make the playoffs or get or, or be a threat in the playoffs. Like, it doesn't make any sense. You know, but... Regardless, it's mainly just them getting in their own way every single year. When it, it doesn't matter what the expectations are, they always find the ways to lose the games that they shouldn't lose. Even then, they lost a lot of heartbreaker games last year. That's just been their motto, really. So, yeah, I don't expect they'll be in the mix for a wild card, but eventually, I don't. I just don't think they have enough to get in. I don't. I mean, I don't think. I just don't think some of these other teams I think are better than that than they are right now. Just. In terms of the, the coaching aspect. Um, second in the division, I have Denver Broncos uh with a record of eight or a record of nine and eight. Um, you look at the Broncos last year, um Nathaniel Hackett being their uh coordinator obviously was an absolute disaster. Um Russell Wilson did not perform up to his standards that I thought he was gonna uh perform. Now you bring in a real coach, Sean Payton, who's won Super Bowls with the Saints, or he's won a Super Bowl with the Saints. You bring him in to this organization. I think it's a tremendous fit. Um, when he first signed, I was like, "That's that." I was looking at the Broncos. I was looking at him. I was like, "That's that's a great fit," because I think he's really going to help Russell Wilson get back to. Uh, I'm not saying he's going to get back to where he was, but he's going to get back to the form that he was in Seattle. Uh, I think he's going to help them get there. I think the Broncos have a solid defense. I think they have a pretty good offense. It's just going to be a matter of can they win those games in the regular season to get in the playoffs because it's going to be it's going to come down to tiebreakers. Okay, it's going to come down to tiebreakers at the end of the day. Do they have enough to get in the playoffs? I don't think they do, but they will improve. They will be a much better team than they were last year. They won, I believe, they won. Six, five, six games last year. I can't remember. They did one only five games last year. I go back and look, but they're, they're going to be much better this year under Sean Payton. I just think the coaching. Some of y'all may not understand coaching matters in 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 sports. It does. You know, if if you don't have the right coach for your organization, like you're not going anywhere. You're not going to be as good as you thought you were going to be. Now you bring in a real coach like Sean Payton, who knows what he was doing. Like that's gonna help Russell Wilson now. It's gonna help him. He's gonna have a much better year this year than he would last year. And everyone's gonna be everyone's gonna perform, but now there's a new face. There's a new energy in the locker room now. Now that's now that Nathaniel Hackett's out of there. So the Broncos will be much better this year. They have I haven't finished it with a record of nine and eight. And obviously, first in the division in the AFC West, I got the Kansas City Chiefs with a record of thirteen and four. Um yeah, I mean, as long as Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid are on the sidelines, you know, they'll be fine. I mean, there's nothing much really to say. I mean, you know, they have the talent offensively. Um, you know, Patrick Mahomes is that dude. You know, he, he he makes things happen with his feet. He throws, you know, just his little sidearm throws. It's just awesome. It's just awesome to watch. Um, but, yeah, I, mean, I don't have them. Uh, obviously, I have them with the same record as the Bengals, but I have them losing the tiebreaker which ultimately puts them down at the two seed in the AFC. Um, but other than that, I mean, there's still, regardless of that, there's still a team to beat in the AFC. Until someone beats the Chiefs, it doesn't matter if they have home field advantage or not, there's still a team to beat. Somebody's got to knock them off um, this season. But that's going to be the question is, um, you know, like I said earlier, if you let the Chiefs get home field advantage, they're not losing. They're not losing. It's that simple. So, um, you know, I still think the Chiefs can go on the road and beat teams if if team if other teams aren't on their A game. So, yeah, that's how, that's where I have them. Like I said, as long as Patrick Mahomes 
and Andy Rear on the side or on those sidelines, they'll be just fine. They'll be just fine. So that wraps it for the AFC. Um, I'm gonna move on to my NFC uh, predictions now. Um, starting with the NFC East at the bottom, I have the Commanders um, finishing fourth with a record of six and eleven. Um, the Commanders um, are interesting because I think their defense is pretty damn good. Um, the only thing is their offense. I don't Sam Howell as their quarterback. I just don't know if that's going to be enough to win in this division. I just don't think they have enough uh, firepower. I don't think they have enough weapons to compete. The defense is legit. They have the defense. I just don't think they have the offense or the quarterback to be able to compete in this division. So safely, I have them right around 6-11, which I think they'll probably win around that. Maybe they'll be between that and maybe eight games, but I'm going to have them around 6-11. Uh, third, I have the New York Giants with a record of, or yeah, the New York Giants finishing third with a record of nine and eight. Um, this Giants team uh, made the playoffs last year, lost to the Eagles in the divisional round, if I remember correctly. Um, with this this conference is kind of I wouldn't say it's weak, but it's definitely weaker than the AFC. I think the Giants. Um, just in general, in this division, I think they're going to get three teams in the playoff. I think the Giants are a playoff team. Um, Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones are going to be obviously going to be the keys. Can, if Saquon Barkley is healthy, I think, you know, if he has a pretty good year, if Daniel Jones has a better year, I think the Giants are definitely a playoff team. But it's just because the conference is weak, and I don't think, you know, other teams in other divisions are going to get three teams. I think this division, the NFC East, are going to at least get three teams in. So I think the Giants will make the playoffs, record of 9-8, um, and that's about it. Um, Cowboys, I have them finishing second with a record of 11-6. and six. Um, This Cowboys team is going to be good. Um, you know, I know, you know, people say every year the Cowboys choke in the playoffs and here and there, but listen, this Cowboys team, this, de this defense is going to be, I mean, looking at my paper right here, they're projected to be the second or third best defense in the league. You know, Micah Parsons is that dude. You know, I, I, if you do not want to go up against Mike Micah Parsons when he's on his eight games, he's he's a scary, scary player on that side of the ball. I would not want to run up the middle against that defense. Offensively, they have, you know, C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup. They just added Brandon Cooks this off season. Uh, I think that's a tremendous pickup um, for the for the. Um, for the Cowboys to add more explosive plays down the field for them. But ultimately, it's going to come down to Dak Prescott and what he does in the playoffs because at the end of the day, you have the talent. I mean, listen, this Cowboy team, there's no excuse why the Cowboys can't at least get to the NFC Championship game this season with the rec with the roster they have. There's no excuse. Dak Prescott has to perform at his best. It doesn't matter what he do. It doesn't matter what you do in the regular season for him. It's all about what you do in the postseason. You got all that money that the Cowboys paid you. It's time to step up and play to the, to the standards that I think you're capable of playing. This Cowboy team, listen, I don't think they're going to win the Super Bowl, but like this Cowboy team is good enough to get to the NFC Championship game. Can you, can you at least get there? Can you get past teams like the 49ers? Can you get past teams like who else? Who, who am I talking about? The, the, the Eagles? They're in your division. Aren't you tired of losing to them in the playoffs every year? If you're a Cowboy fan? If you're just a Cowboys in general, are you tired of losing to the Eagles and all these other teams in your conference every year? There's no excuse. Dak Prescott needs to do something this year. You have a big contract. You're getting paid all this money. There's no reason why you cannot get you lead your team to the NFC Championship game or even the Super Bowl. As laughable as that is, I don't think they're going to make it to the Super Bowl. But there's no reason why the Cowboys can't at least get to the, the conference championship game. Like, come on now. You you have what it takes. You have the talent. You know, I don't know about the coach. I don't, I don't know if I trust um, that coach they have. But outside of that, I mean, you have the defense. You have the weapons on. You have the receiving core on, on offense. 
it's just, it's it's gonna come down to Dak Prescott what he does in the playoffs. That's just my opinion. Okay, it's it's just that simple to me. It's gonna come down to what he does in the playoffs because if he doesn't perform well this year, I mean, there's gonna be questions whether if he's the guy or not. I don't, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But until then, I have the Cowboys finishing eleven and six, second in the NFC East. Um, moving on, I have the Eagles finishing first in the NFC East, twelve and five. Um, heartbreaking loss last year, you know, against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I honestly think the Super Bowl was kind of rigged, in my opinion. Um, you know, you don't make a call like that in the game. I mean, you can say it was pass interference. Some people think it wasn't, but like, you can't make that call at the end of the Super Bowl game. That literally just caught. That literally just cost them the game. They literally just gave the Chiefs a Super Bowl right there. You don't call. You you don't do that. Okay, but. Yeah, I mean, a step back from last year. I think they won <coughs> they won more games last year, but they're still the best team in this division. You know, Jalen Hurts is that dude. I think he'll get he'll continue to get better as a quarterback. The defense is pretty damn good. Um it's just gonna obviously it's gonna come down to um you know, it's gonna come down to really just home field advantage. I think, you know, them and the 49ers are gonna be battling out for the for the top spot in the NFC. Um, but, yeah, not much to really say. I think they're the best, clearly the best team in this division. And, you know, I think Jalen Hurts is the best quarterback in this division, obviously. Um, you know, and they're definitely a team that can definitely get back to the Super Bowl. I don't think, you know, I don't know. If, I don't know if they are or not. Um, but they're definitely, they'll definitely be in the mix to at least get back to the Super Bowl. So it should be interesting to see what they can do and, uh, Interesting seeing how they bounce back after losing that Super Bowl last year. I hope if they come back, come out strong out the gates early, or if they're going to fall flat on their face. I don't know. We'll see. But um, yeah, that's where I have them finishing 12 and 5, first in the NFC East. Moving on to the NFC North, I have um, Chicago finishing last with a record of 7 and 10. I think Justin Fields is a hell of a quarterback. It's also my quarterback from Ohio State. Um, you know, I think they just added, you know, Chase Claypool, um, DJ Moore. They just got in a trade this offseason. Originally, the Bears did have the first pick, but they ended up trading that to Carolina for DJ Moore. I think that's a great pickup for the Bears. Um, defense is still, I still have a lot of questions about their defense. I don't think their defense performed really well last year. They're definitely not that good defensively. Um, I still think they have a long way to go, though. Um, but they'll be better this year, record wise. I think they. Will win more games than they did last year, but they still have a long way to go. If the Bears aren't going to be any type of threat in this division, um, you know, my opinion, I don't like where Justin Fields. I, ever since Justin Fields went to the Bears, I just never was a fan of him going there. I just don't think the organization. I just don't think he's the right fit in that organization, and it's not. Uh, it's not on him. I just don't think the Bears deserve Justin Fields. I think Justin Fields deserves better. In my opinion, and I don't know, who knows? I don't think he's going to finish his career in Chicago. Let's let's get let's get that right. I think he ended up he ended up getting traded in the future, but right now he's just stuck there because you know he's you know he just got there literally last year or whatever. So, but yeah, that's where I have the Bears finishing seven and ten, improvement from last year. Um, but like I said, no threat in the division. I still think the Bears have a long way to go before they're. Uh, before getting back to the playoffs. Uh, third, I have the Green Bay Packers also finishing third, or at the Green Bay Packers finishing third with a record of 7-10 also. Um, uh, J Jordan Love finally is getting an opportunity to see what he can do. After seeing behind Aaron Rodgers for the last few years or so, he finally gets to go out there and showcase his potential. I think he is just as excited as anyone else to get out there and see what he can do. Um, the Packers, the defense is 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 pretty decent. Um, you know, the offense uh, last year did not look well. I mean, Aaron Rodgers um, and just didn't look well. I think they have a nice young core on offense. They have nice young receiving core. Obviously, him and Aaron, them and Aaron Rodgers didn't really click last year in terms of you know 
expectation. You know, Aaron Rodgers trying to win a Super Bowl, whatever, get to the playoffs, and you, know, you have young receivers that are trying to find their way, dropping balls left and right. I mean, it happens. They they just weren't on the same page last year. But I think this year, with a younger quarterback coming into the mix, I think he's going to be more. You know, like I said, just or, um, Jordan Love has been sitting for a long time now. I think he knows the playbook now. He's just very eager to get out there. Now he finally gets an opportunity to go out there and just showcase his talent. I mean, really, that's – that's. I mean, I'm not a Packers fan, but I'm excited to see what Jordan Love does. Um, you know, and, and who knows? I mean, I have the Packers right between six to eight wins. I haven't finished right around seven and ten. I think that's where they will finish. I think that's a pretty solid – year under first year of Jordan Love being the starting quarterback. I think that's a solid, you know, you know if you're if you're a Packers fan, I think you should be, a, I mean, a lot to be excited. Obviously, you're not going to make the playoffs, okay? But you should be excited for the future of your team and then your quarterback. Um, it's just going to come down to, like, can he um, get the consistency part down? That's really about it right there. Can he be more consistent each and every week? With his play, that's gonna be the where I'm really gonna be looking f to see what Jordan see uh, what Jordan Love does in that area. Is can he be consistent week in and week out? So that's about it there. Uh, second in the NFC North, I have the Minnesota Vikings with a record of eight and nine. Um, yeah, I mean the Vikings um, losing Dalvin Cook this off season. Um, um, you know, Kirk Cousins obviously is, you know, Mr. You know, he, he plays well in the regular season. He just doesn't play well under the under the bright lights. Just just that simple to me. I think Justin Jefferson is the best receiver in football. I think he's gonna have another big year this year. But it's just at the end of the day, the the Vikings aren't gonna be any type of threat. Um there's no Aaron Rodgers anymore. In this division, they won the division last year, but ultimately, I don't think, um, you know, I think this division is Detroit's now. I think this, you know, the Vikings are going to take a step back a little bit this year. Um, they'll be in the mix for for a wild card, but I don't think they're going to get in because, like I said before, I don't think they're that as good as they were last year. Um, you know, people want to say, well, last year was a fluke. Last year, it is what it was. The Vikings are a team that plays well in the regular season. And then when it comes to the bright lights, Kirk Cousins does not perform well. He's just always been like that throughout his career. He's never played well under the bright lights. And then, like I said, they could still make the playoffs, but, you know, they're not going to they're not, they're not get anywhere in the playoffs. You know? That's the only bright spot is Justin Jefferson making spectacular catches. You know? maybe we're, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they can go out and win ten plus games. I don't know, but the, I I think eight and nine is right where they. I think they'll be right around that, around that area. Um. Yeah. Moving on, I had the Lions, uh, finishing first in the a NFC North with a record of eleven and six. Um. Yeah. I mean, clearly Lions are clearly the best team in this division. No Aaron Rodgers anymore. Um. Almost made the playoffs last year. I was so upset they didn't make it last year. I really wanted to see this team in the playoffs. They start off terribly. I think they start off like Owen like five or something like that, or one and five or something like that last year. And then all of a sudden they start winning games towards the end of the year, almost getting into the playoffs. Like this team's gonna be really good. Like I'm, I'm. Their offense is so explosive. Um. It's just going to be a matter of their defense is still a work in progress. I don't think defense is that good, but their offense will be enough to win this division. I think, you know, they have what it takes to win this division. There's it's just, there's no, I mean, there's really no excuse why they can't win the division. I mean, this is literally, it's, I mean, you could say it's really anyone's division, but I think it's between the Lions and the Vikings. But I think the Lions will definitely win this division. I don't think they should have any issues not winning. It. I think they're, Right around eleven and six, where I have them, I think they'll be. Um, and who knows? They may even win a playoff game in the in the playoffs. You know that could be a pretty good year for them. You know, just continue to build off of that. But eleven and six, where I have the Lions finishing. All right, moving on to the NFC South. Um, yeah, last place I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, yeah, 
three and or three and fourteen. Uh, yeah, basically, you know, it's, it's this simple. Tom Brady was there last year. You know, you win eight games or whatever. Okay, cool. You don't have Tom Brady no more. So th there's going to be a big drop off between last year and this year. You have Baker Mayfield as your quarterback now. Okay, he's a decent quarterback, but he's not a quarterback that's going to lead you to no NFC South title or nothing like that. Okay, the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just do not have enough. They just clearly don't have enough in this division to compete. They're in the full rebuild now with Tom Brady not there no more. I know Baker Mayfield is a good quarterback, but he's he's not going to lead this team. I don't, I don't think he has the mental fortitude, in my opinion, to be able to, to lead a team. I just don't think, you know, you saw what he did in Cleveland. and All, all that stuff he got into in Cleveland got him traded. I don't think he his, his mental size where I'm looking at with him. Can he lead this Tampa Bay team? And listen, I mean, it, it's not impossible. I mean, this division is not that. I mean, it's not that hard. It's probably one of the weakest divisions in football. But they don't have. They just don't have enough. I don't think. Like I said, I don't think Baker has the mental fortitude to lead a team. That's just my opinion. Okay. So that's about it. There, not much to say. They're not. They're. They'll be. They'll be uh, fighting for. One of the top picks this year. I just don't see Tampa Bay really. I mean, I would be shocked that they won six, five, six, five games or six games. I just don't think they're that good. Um, Carolina, I have them finishing third, record six and eleven. I was going back and forth a little bit with this because I think I honestly think they'll win more than six. I think they'll win around seven, maybe eight. Um, but Bryce Young, this is his first year under center as the starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. His size, everyone obviously is questioning his size going up against some big off uh, some big defensive linemen. That's the one thing I'm kind of worried about with him is you know, if he's in the middle of a scrum and then some, you know, 300 pound lineman comes in, that's the one thing I'm really worried about, but I think he has the physical tools. I think he's definitely one of the best QBs that came out of the draft this year, no doubt. It's just going to come down to um the consistency level with him, and then obviously um, the speed of the game. Obviously, the NFL is a lot faster than it was in college. Stronger guys, guys are, you know, these are grown men. These aren't. This isn't. These aren't college. You know, players are going up against. You're going up against real men, like who've been in the league, who have experience, who know what they're doing, who knows how to go up against a rookie quarterback. That are you know and all that stuff. So. That's the main thing, but you know, I don't think they're a playoff team this year, but I think they're definitely, you know, I think six wins is the safe bet for this team under Bryce Young for his first year. I think they'll um, win around that, and then maybe next year, I think they'll probably be better, and they'll probably maybe make the playoffs next year. I don't know. Um, but moving on, I have the Falcons going 8-9, finishing second in NFC South. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the Falcons are definitely uh, – in the mix for a playoff spot. Um, you know, Desmond Ritter, obviously, I'm not very high on him, um, but I think the, the, the offense, you know, uh, Kyle Pitts, I think that's his name, the tight end they got in the draft. I think he, uh, he will, um, be a factor this year. They just added John U. Smith from New England last year, or in a trade, this off season, um, yeah, I mean the Falcons. You know the defense is pretty, uh, pretty solid as well. I think they'll um, be in in the mix for a playoff spot, um, and they could easily win this division. I mean, division is not it's not that hard to win, but um, it's just going to be a matter of do they have enough to, you know, can they can they win enough games in the regular season to get in? That's going to be the really main question. And then obviously first in the division I have the New Orleans Saints finishing with a record of ten and seven. I think the Saints, um, no excuses now. You have a you have a quarterback. You have Derek Carr as your quarterback. I know people think he's not that good. He didn't really do much last year. I think a new situation. I think all he needed was a new, was a new situation. I think Derek Carr is pretty damn good when he wants to be. Um, you know, you have uh, you have a pretty solid defense that I think can keep you in games. There's really no excuse why the Saints can't win this division. I mean, I would be absolutely shocked if they didn't. 
I would be absolutely shocked if they didn't win this division. You know, I think Derek Carr is clearly the best quarterback in this division. I think the Saints have the best defense in this division. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just going to be a matter of um, can Derek Carr, you know, can he take this team deep in the playoffs? I mean, that's really what, you know, really what I think their expectation is to obviously win the division and get and go deep in the playoff. Can they, can they, you know, can they get to a conference championship game maybe? You know, we never know. But, you know, 10 wins, I think they're clearly the best team in the division. I think they'll win 10 games again in the playoffs. Um, moving on to the NFC West, um, last place, obviously, Arizona Cardinals. I had one in one game. I was going to give them two games. I originally had two and 15, but I got one in 16. Clearly the best, worst team in the league. They're going to be fighting. They're definitely going to have the number one pick. Uh, no Kyla Murray for the, for really the whole year, really. They say he may he could come back early December, but there's really no point in him coming back. I mean, the Cardinals are they're going to be way out of playoff contention by then. I don't see a point of him even making a return. I think he'll be out for the whole year, honestly. Um, yeah, not much to say. I mean, they'll be they're going to be um, in the mix for one. That I think they will be. Uh, they will have the number one pick this year. Um, moving on, I have it from the Rams finishing seven and ten. <coughs> um. This Rams team obviously t finished terribly last year. Um, after winning that Super Bowl last year, man, they just had one of the biggest. I don't think I've ever seen a bigger fall off after winning the Super Bowl. Normally, you would be a little bit worse, but not that worse. They fell off completely off the map after winning that Super Bowl. I mean, they hey, the one thing I will credit them is they went for it. You know, they went out, they traded all them draft picks away to get, you know, to, to get the pieces they need to win the Super Bowl. And they won the Super Bowl, so I'll give them credit there, but they really have not recovered since that Super Bowl. So, other than that, man, I mean, I think the Rams, I mean, they're not going to be a playoff team. I think Matthew Stafford, um, it, it, you know, it's going to be a matter of can he stay healthy, you know, and all that stuff. That's going to be the question. Cooper Cup, I think, is legit. I think he's pretty good, but, you know, they're, I just think the Seahawks and the 49ers are just light years away from them. I just don't think they are up there with them right now. You know, seven wins, I think they'll, they'll definitely better. They are better than they were last year, but they're not going to make the playoffs or anything like that. I think they have them right around seven to win, seven to ten, which I think that's a safe bet. Um, moving on, I have the Seahawks finishing second with a record of 11 and six. If you look at last year, look at the Seahawks team last year, right? People question, is Geno Smith the answer for this team? Like, Geno Smith proved a lot of people wrong last year. This Seahawks team won 10 games last year, 9 or 10 games last year. I think they're going to build off of last year, and I think they're going to be even better this year. It, the only thing is, how far can this team go in the playoffs? You know, can Geno Smith, can the rest of those guys step up and make a deep playoff run? You know, I think they can split with the 49ers in this division. I don't think it's impossible. You know, 49ers have the best defense in the league. Um, but this team could compete with the 49ers. I think they can compete um, all around. I think they have Geno Smith is pretty damn good quarterback. Um, yeah, I mean, not, not much. really not much to say. I think they're uh, clearly the second best team in this division. I think Geno Smith is, 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 a, is a pretty good quarterback. Um, it's just going to be a matter of what the playoff matchups are. You know, they, they ran up against the 49er team last year. They got blown out, which, you know, was expected. The 49ers are legit. So, um, that's about it. Other than that, I have them finishing second with record of 11-6. And, and I think they'll build off of last year. First in the NFC West, I have the 49ers finishing with record of 13-4. and four. Um, You know, best defense in 2023. You know, there's no... Um, no, no, no doubts about that. You know, um, they, they, they don't have a weakness. They don't really have a weakness. They have the offense. They have the coaching. They have the defense. The only thing is, I wrote on my paper, can they finish the deal? You have the best. I think they. You have the best. You're clearly the best team in the conference. Can you finish it off with a Super Bowl? That's gonna be the question. That's the only thing they're missing. Can they finish it off with a Super Bowl win? So, not much to say. 
they're they're legit. I mean, they're gonna be uh, nobody's gonna want to play them. You know, nobody's gonna want to play them in the playoffs. They're gonna be that team that you know they're the team to beat in that conference. I mean, they're they've been the top of the NFC for the last couple of years now. I mean, they've they're legit. I mean, they're not a team that anyone wants to play. I wouldn't want to play. I wouldn't want to go up against that defense if I were any other team. So it's about it right there. So yeah. So that's that. So that wraps up the AFC and NFC um, division right, or division predictions. I'm gonna move on to my top seven playoff teams in each conference. I'm gonna start with the AFC. Um, I have the Bengals finishing number one. I have the Chiefs finishing number two. I have the Jags number three. Bills number four. Ravens five. Patriots number six, and I have the Jets finishing number seven. In the NFC side, I have 49ers number one. Eagles 2, Lions 3, Saints 4, Cowboys 5, Seahawks 6, Giants 7. Now, I have my playoff predictions laid, laid out right here. I'm going to give you my playoff predictions. I'm going to pick each game, and I'm going to pick uh, my Super Bowl winner, who I think is going to win the Super Bowl. So first off, on the AFC side, I have the Chiefs going up against the Jets as a 2-7. and seven. Um, I have the Chiefs winning that game. Jags versus the Patriots, three and six matchup. I have the Jags winning that game. Uh, Bills versus Ravens, four versus five. I have the Bills winning that game. Um. Now moving on to the a NFC side on the wild card matchup, two versus seven. I have the Eagles versus the Giants. I have the Eagles winning that game. Um, three versus six. That's the Lions versus the Seahawks. I have the Lions winning that game. Saints versus Cowboys. Uh, four versus five. I have the Saints winning that game. Moving on to the divisional matchups, I have Bengals versus the Bills as the one and four. Got the Bengals winning that game. Chiefs versus the Jags, two versus three. I have the Chiefs winning that game. Uh, NFC side, I have the 49ers versus the Saints, one versus four matchup. I have the 49ers winning that game. Eagles versus the Lions, two versus three. I have the Eagles winning that game. And moving on to the uh, conference championship games. Bengals versus the Chiefs, one through two. I have the Bengals winning that game. Um, 49ers versus the Eagles, one versus two. I have the 49ers winning that game. So that concludes the wild card, the divisional round, and the conference championship games. Now my Super Bowl matchup we've all been waiting for. I got the Bengals versus the 49ers in the Super Bowl, 58 this year. And the winner is the Cincinnati Bengals. I think this is the year the Bengals finally, finally get through the AFC, get through that curse that they've been dealing with forever. They finally get through the, the AFC, and they win this first Super Bowl in franchise history. I think Joe Burrow is that guy. I think I said earlier, I think he's that guy. Um... um yeah, I think the Bengals have an all-around team. They have what it takes to win the Super Bowl. They have enough talent around them to win the Super Bowl. So that wraps it up for my NFL predictions. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Leave a like. Uh, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be posting on here more often, weekly, throughout the season. Hope you guys have a good one.